support the ethanol requirement and the biodiesel requirement? I do. Uh, the thing is that the science is still with us, and, and we can chat about this down the road if you'd like, but you know, I know that there are a lot of studies out there about the use of energy in order to, to create ethanol or biodiesel. The fact is we're becoming more technologically efficient to make sure that we get a lot more energy out of a gallon of ethanol or biodiesel than that goes in. Uh, plus the fact is that we have preached for decades now, adding value to a raw commodity like corn and soybeans. One of the things to do, of course, then, is renewable fuels like ethanol and biodiesel. Uh, biomass is another uh, opportunity that we have. Uh, the, the, rather than looking to the Middle East for our energy needs, we should look right here in the Midwest. Uh, we've done that very well here in Missouri. We want to keep building upon that progress and that success. Let me get the last question, Jason. Um, do you support giving tax credits or tax breaks to ethanol um, entities with lawmakers as investors? I know your opponent in the primary has made a issue of that. What is your opinion on that? What, what my opinion is that there is, first of all, the, the federal tax credit, which we are instrumental. In fact, the biodiesel tax credit that I wrote. <laughs> and authored, and it became now part of the National Energy Plan. Uh, I know there are tax credits at the state level. I think that those tax credits are very useful. When you look at where the ethanol industry was, for instance, back in the late 70s, we only um, had a, uh, created about uh, 700 uh, million gallons of ethanol, and now we've got uh, close to 6 billion gallons of ethanol, and partly because of these tax credits, so I support the tax credits. The final point I would say to you is, uh, for those that say, are we, in, in fact, the owner editor of your newspaper, uh, my hometown paper, and, he, and Hank and I have had these conversations too, why should we single out one particular industry for special tax treatment? My answer is because over these decades we have helped subsidize the oil industry, and so it's going to take some time uh, for us to, uh, at, at a very mature market, the oil industry, we provide certain uh, write-offs as far as depletion allowances and things like that, and so tax credits to me help level the field. But would you support the low interest loans to the, those entities low loans with, as well. with lawmakers as, as investors? Well, the investors have to decide. To me, the best thing is transparency, and I think that's, uh, it's been very transparent as far as lawmakers choosing to make an investment. And I think that's then appropriate then for their constituencies to say whether they think that's uh, something they support or not support. But the concept and then principle, especially for the small owner producer ethanol or biodiesel plants, low interest loans is another way then to really help give them uh, a, a, to create a more mature market. That's ultimately what we're trying to do is, is have a level field so that our domestic producers, and I see the Amen Choir back there, Jojo, uh, but, but providing these tax incentives uh, to do it. Ultimately, we'd like to have a mature market that wouldn't need these particular incentives, but until we actually have that market, and it kind of goes back, David, to what you said as far as uh, whether we have a mandate or not. Uh, last little vignette is that Renee and I, we don't have a flex fuel vehicle quite yet. Uh, our Ford Explorer has 181,000 miles on it, and uh, it's going to get a lot more miles. We do our own uh, E30 blend by taking uh, a little bit of E85 and a little bit of E10, and uh, because you don't have to have special flex fuel changes for our vehicle to have E30, and so we uh, call it home brew, I guess, right? <laughs> Just as we do on the farm, we burn a, a, a biodiesel blend as well because until we get the consumers out there to recognize that this is in the best interest of our rural economy as well as the best, the best interest of our national interest of being less dependent upon other countries to supply our energy needs, then we won't need these mandates. Uh, we'll have consumers themselves that will be de deciding we have to have these biofuels.